Welcome to Restoration Ministry, streaming live from Connorsville, Indiana. Make yourself at home. Cold drinks are in the Worship Well refrigerator, and coffee and candy are in the back on the table. Also, help yourself to snacks in the foyer. If there are any leftovers, you're welcome to take them, and our carry-out containers are in the top cupboard in the Worship Well. Tonight, Wade will continue teaching on spiritual warfare. Tonight's topic will be Te Telestii. Now what? For those of you who would like to attend our Monday night classes in person, we're located at the Higher Praise Resource Center, 1210 Illinois Avenue in Connorsville, Indiana. Come out and join us for a powerful time in the glory. And if Connie doesn't have your phone number, please give it to her so you can be contacted in case there's a time when class needs to be canceled at the last minute. And if by chance we have a computer incident, a recorded version will be posted the following day. If you would like a tax receipt at the end of the year, put donations into the envelopes in the back and put your name on it. We also have a text to give number, which is 833-758-0290. Again, that text to give number is 833-758-0290. 0290, and we do appreciate your giving. Thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. Well, praise the Lord. Good to have everyone here tonight. Who has a testimony they'd like to give before we get started tonight with our worship? Does anyone have a word for the Lord tonight? Nobody? Come on now. Well, before we begin tonight, uh, Sherry, would you come and, and uh, take this anointing oil and go around and anoint everyone? Because I want eyes to see and ears to hear, to be anointed, to hear the word of the Lord and have a vision tonight. For those of you who don't know what she's going to do, she, th this oil is a symbolic of Holy Spirit. And what we're going to do is that we're going to worship the Lord and we're going to wait in His presence. And what I want you to do is concentrate on Him. Let Him speak to you tonight. Let Him give you a vision. It's called a revelation, okay? It's, it can be life-changing. And so we're going to anoint you, and she's just going to go around with everybody now. Thank you, Sherry, for doing that. Glory to God. And as she's doing that, let's do what we, we've done the last couple weeks. Let's take all those cares, take them right out of our mind, take them and wad them up, and give him a hurl. Cast your care upon him, for he cares for you. He cares for you. Specifically tonight, Holy Spirit, if you're looking for comfort tonight, you'll have to find somebody else besides Wade. Because tonight he's told me to exhort and edify. And uh, that means I'm going to tell it like it is. So if you're looking for somebody to pat you on the head, you have to look for somebody else besides Wade tonight. Because I'm going to tell you some things that, that we need to hear. The remnant needs to hear. The remnant already knows in their heart of hearts. But it has, they're not able to verbalize what I'm going to say tonight. And we're going after a spirit of fear, particularly the fear of man. It's going to be exposed tonight. Rejection, insecurity. Seeking the approval of men. That's the target tonight. We're going to go after that. So let's worship the Lord tonight. Connie, lead us in worship. He is so good. Lord, we long, we long to be with you in your presence tonight. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. In this place, now my soul does burn within me, cause
Cause I feel Jesus in this place. I feel Jesus. Oh, I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus in this place. Now my soul does burn within me cause I feel Jesus in this place. And as I walked into the door, I felt his presence. And I knew this was the place where love abounds. For this is the temple Jehovah God abides here. And we are standing in his presence on holy ground. Oh, yes, we are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. So let us praise oh let us praise Jesus now cause we are standing in his presence on holy ground and in his presence there is joy beyond all measure Oh, yes, there is. And at his feet, sweet peace of mind can still be found. If you have a need, oh, he has the answer. Reach out and claim it, child. You're standing on holy ground. Oh, we are standing on holy ground. And I know, I know there's angels all around. So let us praise, let us praise Jesus now. Cause we are standing in his presence on holy ground. Oh, in your presence there is joy beyond all measure. Oh, yes, and at his feet, at your feet, sweet peace of mind is found. And if we have a need, we know you have the answer. So we'll reach out and claim it, because we are standing, we're on hold. Holy ground, oh, we are standing, we're standing on holy ground, and I know, I know there's angels all around, so let us praise, let us Praise Jesus now, cause we are standing in your presence.
presence. Lord, we are standing. We're standing in your presence. Oh, Lord, we are standing. We're standing in your presence on holy ground. Oh, welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands. Oh, we lift our hearts as we offer up this sacrifice of praise. Lord, you are welcome. You're welcome in this place. You're welcome into this, this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up our sacrifice of praise. Creation declares your glory and the universe declares your majesty. Still you choose to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands, oh, we lift our hearts as we offer up the sacrifice of praise. Lord, you are welcome. We lift our hands in welcome to you. of your people so we lift we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up to you Lord a sacrifice of praise cause you are worthy Lord you are worthy, you are worthy, Lord. Oh, you're so worthy. Oh, you're worthy, Lord. Oh, Lord. you are worthy, Lord. Let the sweet aroma of our worship, let it fill this room, let it rise unto the Father, oh, like a fragrant sweet perfume. Let our song of praise be pleasing 
and our sacrifice consumed as the sweet, the sweet aroma of our worship fills this room. Let the sweet, the sweet aroma of our worship fill this room. Let it rise unto you, Father, like a fragrant sweet perfume. Let our song of praise be pleasing and our sacrifice, let it be consumed as the sweet, the sweet aroma of our worship fills this room. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. Oh, you are worthy. You're worthy. you're awesome Lord oh you are awesome you are awesome in this place you are awesome mighty God oh yes you are you are awesome in this place oh the Father you are so all praise to you our lives we praise cause you are awesome in this place mighty God you are awesome you are awesome you are awesome Lord you are awesome In this place, mighty God. Yes, you are awesome. In this place, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, it's Holy Spirit revealing. I saw Jesus high and lifted up on a throne in white robes. Amen. 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 That's what we did in our worship. We lifted him up. Praise God. Who else? I, I seen a heart. It was in a chest, but it was the shape of a heart, but it was dry. It was There was a dry, desolate land, and it was like, a, like the black and white, cartoon but even in that dry land but then it started filling up with red blood to just where it was bulging in the heart just that restoration you know for hardened hearts right now yes lord oh i'm coming against any hardened hearts lord they feel dried up and that there's nothing 
that there's nothing more, there's nothing more to do in life, that they're empty. I'm praying that for revelation of you and just you filling them up and restoring broken hearts, stony hearts, yes, and just filling them up with you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm over here. Mindy. Please. I saw uh, me as a little girl in the kitchen dancing with Jesus. And what really stood out to me is that he had a huge smile on his face. And he just looked joyful. And, you know, kitchens are places of communion, fellowship, um, preparation. But, and we, you know, I often think of what can I get out of my time with the Lord. But, you know, it brings him great joy to commune with us mm-hmm. and to dance and, mm-hmm. and just love on him. Amen. So, it's just beautiful. That people's eyes are open. Mm-hmm. That they can see yeah. and participate in this romance of the ages. Yes. That's ours. Mm. Yeah. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, this this romance of the ages. Wow. We just I just pray for each and every person listening to have a deep revelation of this romance and this great love that is with you, Lord, and open their eyes, soften hearts, Lord, to receive your love and to enter into these times of communion and fellowship and great joy just being in your presence, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I also had a word of knowledge about seizures. So... I don't know if anybody... Come against that. It's a spirit. Come against that spirit right now. Because there's many people that... Yeah. that who else have it? You have a niece. Okay. Vanessa. Call her name out right now. The Holy Spirit's just going to go after them right now. In Jesus' name. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just come against this demonic spirit causing seizures. We bind you and we command you to leave. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we speak that these people are healed, whole, delivered, set free in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. People play with that thing. You see, more, you know, I want to pet it. And it can't be petted. It has to be cast out. Glory to God. Who else? Sherry? So, for, for a little while now... Um, My spirit's really been a feeling that we must protect our spirit. And there's just so much that's going on right now that I heard him say, protect your spirit. You must separate yourselves from anything that is not of him. Time is coming that we will not be able to discern the times if we've allowed our spirit to be afflicted. And he brought back into my remembrance a time that he put the word plumb line into my spirit. And at that time that he gave me that word plumb line, we were at the altar. And he had me do a prophetic action of of drawing the line on the floor. And then he said, now step in. And at that particular time, there was others standing on each side of me and he directed me at that time to grab their hands to even the point to where he showed me, no, that's not right. That's not how I want you to grab it. I want you to grab them this way. And what he showed me later was that that wasn't easily broken in the way that our hands were held at that time to where the other way it was easily broken. And, and after we grasped hands, then he said, now step in step over the plumb line and that's kind of what come back to my remembrance now after he gave me this word then i heard the words again plumb line yes praise god praise god have people right now just pray for people right now sherry but there'll be such a unity 
that will be lockstep with Holy Spirit in this whole whole situation that, that, that we're moving into. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just ask you, Lord, to touch everyone, Lord, that is able to hear. Father God, the sound of my voice right now, Lord, we just pray that uh, you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Lord God, quicken their spirits. That is, this is not a time to be playing patty cake with the enemy. And that we cannot allow our spirits to be tainted, to be infected, to be affected. By these things of this world, Lord, we know that we're in this world, but we're not of this world. So, Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, that you just grant us this, uh, this blood covering, Lord God, to help us. Lord, we cannot do anything apart from you. So I'm asking you, Lord, that you would just help us, Lord, to put on this uh, protection. Lord, you call us to wear our armor. And I do believe that means 24-7. That is never to, to be taken off. But Lord God, there is still a penetration, Lord, that can happen if we're not careful of our spirits to be infected by this world. So Lord, I thank you, Lord, as you show us, as you sharpen us, Lord, that you pull us away from those things that is not of you and that you give us the discernment for for what is happening, Lord, in this world around us, especially in these times, Father God, that we do not want to hinder your work within us. We do not want to not be able to hear what thus saith the Lord for anything that may be of us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to sanctify, to purify, and to be set apart, Lord, in this time. Help us, Lord God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the blood, the blood of Jesus, Lord, that covers us, Lord God. And as we walk this walk, we walk it together, hand in hand, not being separated, that the enemy cannot separate this bond of this holding of the, the joint connection of the hand-to-hand -hand combat that I see in the Spirit that is coming. I ask you, Lord, for your equipping of the saints, your soldiers, your warriors, Father God. Rise us up for this time. Equip us, Lord God. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Sonia, Lord, show you something. All I seen was a bright, illuminating light, and it felt as if, like, um, I was breathing him in or breathing in. So, Praise like, God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Illumination. Yes. Amen. Any humanity, anything? You want to contribute? About over here. Dylan? Yeah. I seen a, uh, a uh, peaceful river flowing down the mountainside. And then after I kind of had like an aerial bird's eye view of the river flowing down the mountain, I go back to the top of the mountain, and then water just saturated the mountain like a, kind of like an avalanche, but it was water instead of snow. What do you think that means? <laughs> Sounds like a, a wave of the Holy Spirit, yeah. a peaceful, yeah. peaceful river, and then we'll just be saturated in the Spirit. Well, Lord, bring that tsunami of Holy yes, Spirit Lord. on. Hallelujah. Right now. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just ask that you. Let your Holy Spirit move amongst us, Father, in Jesus' holy and righteous name. Amen. Amen. Some people need to sweep off their feet, doesn't they? Bonnie? Uh, nothing right, you know, tonight other than just a breaking, uh, breaking in the spirit. But I brought, I just, it came back to me what I, I got yesterday when um, we were watching like a news clip. And it, it was, and not to be political, but it was how a comment that was made about the Republican Party fighting amongst themselves. And it kind of reminded me of the church in general versus the world, you know, the ungodly. They're sitting back and watching the infighting among the members of the body when the body has to come together in unity. 
That's the key thing is the unity in the body. Come together in Christ. Just forget about all this bickering between denominations and all that junk. Um, and it's like in our country, in our government, they're watching them. They don't have to do a lot because they're destroying themselves. You know, they're sitting back when we are bickering among ourselves. I'm saying the ungodly. Watch, it's, it's like I used to tell the kids when, when they were fighting. There's little imps around the corner here, around in, in the corners just laughing because they got you to do this. That you know, you, you fell for it. You got into strife and you're fighting and they're laughing. You know, we have to stay in unity or we can't, you know, we can't move forward. And another thing was looking back. Today it was looking, I was driving back from Batesville and it, it hit me that we, you know, I've, I've been serving the Lord for like this time, a little over 25 years. And I was thinking, you know, Ben and I have been married half of my life, you know. And being stuck in the past, thinking of things in the past, that's all done. That's over with. You can't go back. You can't change anything. You cannot allow it to define you. Your past cannot define you. Yes, it does take part in forming how you are, but God restores you. And you, you, uh, you can't look in the rearview mirror and drive forward at the same time. You can do it, but it, it can cause an accident. Amen. You have to focus forward. You learn from the past, but you move forward. And if you're looking in the rearview mirror all the time, you cannot move forward. It's not forward. to live in, is it? You're, it's not to live in. That's right. You cannot move forward. Amen. That's good, Bonnie. Mike, you want to show you something? Yeah. There you uh, go. Come on up here, Hanson. Then Jeff put the lens on you. Yeah. Uh, somebody had said something earlier this week in devotionals, and the Lord just brought it to my remembrance because I pictured it as she was saying it. And it was talk. She was talking about a mountain climber and how they got up this mountain and and they went one way and they were climbing up the side of this cliff. And if you can picture a cliff, how it'll it'll go out, and the rock facing will go out, and then you have to kind of, you ever seen a mountain climber climb up a wall, and then they have to grab that cliff and hang out on it and pull their self up? Well, in this story she was sharing, what I seen was, I seen this mountain cliff, and then I seen a hand reaching over. But we weren't. And I don't know if this was for me or what, or if God's stretching my faith, or if it's for somebody in here. But then he, he just referenced me to the book of James, where it talks about faith and works. If you go to the 17th verse, you know, we can see God's hand reaching out, and we know God's there. And he'll take care of us, and we walk by faith and not by... We know the word, what it says. But, you know, it says in the 17th verse, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you, show thee my faith by my works. But then it goes on down, and it, it up above that it references Abraham. And when God spoke to Abraham to be that father, and how when Abraham was not Abraham our father justified by works, when he had offered Isaac up upon the altar, see us. Thou how faith wrought with his works, and by his works faith was made perfect. So in that, in this journey with, without faith, we know it's impossible to please God. And I just believe the Lord is trying to stretch some of us tonight 
to believe him above anything that we could ever think or imagine. You see what I'm saying? And, and trust me, I want to think that I got faith. But I learn every day that my faith is continually being tested. And, and God is, is, he's wanting me to reach further, you know what I'm saying? And just trust him even more. You know, Abraham, look, Abraham, the Bible, it says right there, even the devil believes and trembles. Abraham, look, when God spoke to Abraham, and he said, look, I'll make you the father of many nations. Abraham had to obey God and step out by faith. You see what I'm saying? We have to obey the leading of God's spirit. Faith's not faith until there's action behind it. Yes. Believing's not faith. Believing's Amen. Not faith. Amen. Jesus said in John 10, 37, he said, if I don't do the works of my father, don't believe what I say. But if I do, but if I do, mm. Believe, believe the works. It. Believe it. Even though you don't believe what I say, believe the works. For they testify that I'm in my Father and He's in me. So our motto ought to be, if I don't do the works of Jesus Christ, don't listen to me, but let the miracles of God speak for themselves. That's right. Amen. They speak better than I do. Glory to God. Shelly, Lord, show you something tonight. I just keep hearing over and over again, um, fear not, have faith. Amen. Have Good faith. word. Fear not, have faith. David? The only thing I saw or, or felt was small, and I couldn't even get a picture of that other than just myself curled up, and that's about it. But small came to me. Dynamite comes in a little package. <laughs> Boom! Boom, that's right. That's right. Glory to God. There you go, girl. I, I just saw a, I saw a rainbow, and, I, and it was kind of far away, but, you know, that's just, I don't, I don't know what it meant. And then my arm, when I was sitting here, I got this tingling, tingling, and my arm just turned, is, was kind of numb or felt strange, so. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody yeah, else have nerve it, problems? Wait, from oh, here oh, down. Oh, 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 He's going to say something. <laughs> Pray for Ben. Go down there and anoint. She'll carry it to him. If you want to, slap her on the head because she needs to slap Ben on the head. Get him over here. <laughs> okay. Father God, we come against the alcoholism right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against his spirit of addiction. Lord, we, I just pray that when he takes a drink, it makes him sick. That that, that alcohol does not do it for him. That he has a, develops a hunger for you, Lord, and seeks you and he finds you. And Lord, I just ask that you release your healing virtue into his arm or what is heart, you know, whatever it is that's calling this, causing this numbness and um, tingling. Lord, I just speak to that, and Lord, we just ask that your, your virtue flow through him and comfort this one in the thank name you, of Jesus. Amen. Father thank God, you, we Jesus. thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Amy. Praise God, Doug. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, ever since your opening statement, uh, this passage came to me, uh, uh, Jer Jeremiah 17, if I may read it. <clears throat> uh, uh, starting in uh, Jeremiah 17, 5. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. He will be like a bush in the wastelands. He will not see prosperity when it comes he will dwell in the he will dwell in the parched places of the desert in a salt land where no one lives but blessed is the man who trusts in the lord whose confidence is in him he will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream it does not fear when he comes its leaves are always green it has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit 
The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. That, was, that passage came to me when you spoke earlier. Praise God. Sounds, Sounds like, like we all got, got a choice, choice. don't we? Yeah. <laughs> got a choice. Yeah. Dylan? Yeah. And Brother Mike was speaking. Uh, Sister Sherry's plumb line. I got I to help draw the plumb line here on this. Titus 3. I'm going to read a little bit. Is that okay? It says, Remember them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when, when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, he who poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Now this right here, Brother Mike, this is it right here. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. Amen. Thank you, Dylan. Praise you. Can't go wrong We're in the Lord, can you? Connie? Um, before I tell what the Lord showed me, I got a um, text from Arizona. And this person is commenting on what Sherry said. I take an extremely challenging exercise class that has strengthened the core of my body. In this class, my 56-year-old body is able to do what I never dreamt it could do. But in this class, the importance of being right with that plumb line is imperative for building that core strength. If not in line with it, you can spin and become dizzy, and in parentheses, confused, and it can also result in injury. This spoke to me about the importance of being in the Lord's plumb line, as our sister spoke of. This results in clarity, strength, and unity with him. We're able to do things in him beyond earthly comprehension, because God is our core. Amen. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, I saw two things. First, I saw like a box, and I don't know what the bottom was made out of, but the top was something that was about this thick that was solid gold, and I saw it being lifted, and there were beautiful blessings that were coming forth. And I felt like usually... I've said this many times when I speak. We don't worship to get things, but we get things because we worship. And so as we are in the glory, the gold glory, beautiful blessings are coming. And um, Adam, when I saw your name on there, I don't know if you're still on there. When I saw your name come up on my, I saw Taylor's in a little while. But the Lord told, him, told me when I saw your name that he's going to bring you abundant blessings Amen. on purpose. Amen. And then the next thing that he showed me, he said to me, I've counted to three. Ready, set, go. And Lord... Tonight, let us be ready, let us be set, and let us go as you want us to go, Lord. That's an hour word, been confirmed yes. over and over tonight. Yes. Praise the Lord. But they asked me to interpret it. Um, there was another lady at church, she's a minister, um, but she 
had a dream that she was coming down 229 from Batesville and the fields. And she said there were people in uniforms, and it was like football uniforms, I believe. So it was a team. That's what we were, you know, they were in, in uniform. They were blue and white. And there was a tornado coming. I don't know if it was dark or light. She hasn't answered me yet on that because I wanted to ask that question. Because if it was dark, it was judgment. If it was light, it was God's will being done, you know. Um, but she said, she was telling him, come, come, come to me. I've got a place of refuge. You can come in here. You'll be safe. And she turned around, and it was like an old barn or a shed. It didn't look like something that would, to the natural eye would be safe from a tornado. But it was a safe haven. And they were a team, and the, the blue and the white. You know, that God was, the, the, what I got from it, and it was, she was here and warned them. She had had a dream the day before, woke up from it. She didn't remember the dream, but she heard the words, warn them. And it, what I got from it was that the presence of the Lord, he's going to be coming in like a, you know how he came in as a mighty rushing wind, but he's the wind of the spirit is going to come through and it is going to clean out things that don't need to be here. We need to get everything out of our lives, get 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 right, get ready, because and I'm not saying, you know, uh, some people say you gotta get ready because of the rapture. But we need to be ready, period. We've got warfare to do. And we have to get everything out of our lives because those team players, they were God's people. And they're they, playing. They were, it's time to stop playing. It's time to stop it. playing games. Yes, that's it. That's it. Well, well praise God. God. That's yeah. another good word for sure. Does anyone, anyone else have anything, anything before I start on my board here? Anybody? Well, praise God. For you new fellas, this may be a little bit different for you, but that's all right. Difference is good. Yeah. Is that a promise? As Sister Sherry was talking about being equipped, it took me to uh, the Lord Holy Spirit reminded me of Nehemiah 4.17, and it'll get you fired up. And uh, I'll go back to 16. So it was from the time, from that time on, that half of my servants worked at construction while the other half held the spears, the shields, the bows, and wore armor, and the leaders were behind all of Judah. Those who built on the wall and those who carried the burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction and with the other hand they held a weapon. So we're entering a time where we need to, we need to be armored up, be ready, and be doing our work also. That's good. Good, Dylan. Thank you. Well, praise God. Tonight, I'm just extending what I talked about last week. Talked about the finished work of Jesus Christ last week. And uh, just barely scratched the surface. So tonight, I'm talking about hey, telestii. What now? Hey, telestii means what? John 19, 30. Jesus' last words on the cross. It is finished. And we talked about you know, the quintessential question, what was finished? Well, Matthew 5, 17, Jesus said, I did not come to destroy the law and the prophets. I came to fulfill. Guess what he did? He fulfilled. He fulfilled all the requirements of the penalty of the law. Everything the prophets pointed to According to Jesus and his finished work. Now, I'm going to read Colossians 2, starting at verse 13, because I want to explain this word was not just used by accident. In the marketplace in Israel and in Judah, whenever there was a merchant who someone owed him money and wouldn't pay it, they had a board there. And he would nail that debt and the name of that person 
on that board. And if a close relative came by, a kinsman redeemer, a goel, if he came by and saw that, he would pay for that. And when he paid for it, he would write tetelestai on it. Paid in full. Debt paid, it is finished. So let me read Colossians 2, starting at 13. And when you were dead in your wrongdoings and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our wrongdoings, having canceled the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us. What he's referring to there is the law. The law of Moses. You can just summarize that in the Big Ten. The law of sin and death. Which was hostile to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. <laughs> and when he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. Amen. I like the message translation. It said he prayed to them naked through the streets. Total victory over Satan and his demons. So, that's what we have with Tate the Leslie Eye. And I ask the question, what now? What about us? How does this affect us? That's great, you know, to know that Jesus died and rose again, but what, what, what's that mean to me? How does that affect me? Well, let me tell you what this finished work of Jesus Christ was. It was the pinnacle of human experience. All human history was changed because of Jesus' finished work. The date was even changed. It went from B.C. to A.D. Everything changed. Sin was eradicated. 2 Corinthians 5.21 And he, the Father, made him, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Turn to somebody and say, Did you know you were the righteousness of God? That sin is no longer an issue? Now, wait a minute now. That's a big egg to swallow. Sin is no longer an issue, folks. He became sin. Now, I want you to think about that for a minute. When you know who you are in Him, sin is no longer an issue. That was eradicated from your life. There's a place in God where faith is not even necessary. Because you're walking in Him. You don't have to work up faith. It's His faith anyway. He's the author and the finisher of your faith, right? Hebrews 12, 2. He's the one who originates it. And He's the one who supplies it. All we can do is can say, thank you, Jesus. That's all we can do. You can't do anything to earn what He has already accomplished. I'm going to say that again, and I want you to think about what I'm saying. You can't do anything to gain any influence with God. Because you already have it. What he thinks of you is what he thinks of Jesus. Everything that was promised Jesus, say, is mine. Every resource of heaven, say, is, is mine. Ooh, I, blew, I, I see some smoke come out of somebody's ears. I blew, blew some circuits. <laughs> Romans 8.17 says, look, you're heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. You know what a joint heir is? You get the same inheritance as Jesus had. Amen. All of heaven's resources. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you're all doing this to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. But wait a minute now. How does that affect your life? Once you begin to understand this, 
What difference should this make? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, as it is written. Cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree. That the blessings of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The blessing of Abraham was all wrapped up in Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the blessing of Abraham that's yours and mine. And we have most of the church saying, well, you know, they followed Augustine way back there in the 300s, and uh, uh, he put Holy Spirit on the bench. And fundamentalists love him. There's a, he's, uh, oh, Augustine is their champion. He was a thug. Oh, yeah, I said that, Mr. Fundamentalist. Absolutely. They made this the third person of the Trinity, and they made Holy Spirit a red-headed set child. Plain and simple. Wade, why don't you say it like you mean it? Okay, I will. <laughs> now look at this one, 1 Peter 2.24. On the whipping post, even before the cross, by his stripes you were healed. Amen. Healing was released into the atmosphere of planet Earth. It's yours. Think about this for a minute. You don't have to put up with that mess. When you know it's yours, you need to act on that. Remember faith? It's his faith, but his faith involves your believing and your acting on it. So you need to speak to this thing right here. You come in line with the Word of God. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Pancreas, you come in line right now. You'll not secrete, over-secrete, and under-secrete. Diabetes, you have to go now in Jesus' name. No more sugar issues. Liver, you have to function as you were designed to function. Appetite, you have to function. Glory to God. Now I'm really, I, 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 I'm meddling now. Somebody needs the medal. <laughs> Ephesians 4, verse 8. And as three days after the crucifixion, when Jesus came forth, he brought captivity captive. Again, somebody tell me what that means. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, he cleaned it out. He cleaned out Hades, didn't he? He whistled to Adam and Eve and says, we're out of here, sweetheart, let's go. Everybody else in here. Who's got the keys? He does. He does. Jesus. <sighs> Revelation 1, 17 and 18. Somebody read that for me because you won't believe it if I quote it. Somebody else needs to read it because I keep quoting this stuff and nobody wants to, to, to really swallow it. So somebody sugarcoat it a little bit for me. Here. You've got a sweeter voice than I do. You said 1, 17 and 18, right? Yes. Okay. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Now what's that mean? Jesus has the keys. Yes. What, what, what's having the keys mean? Authority. Um, Ownership. Bingo. Yeah. Now I want you to understand what this means. Now, 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 now listen carefully now. Because I, I, I want you to understand this. And I'm going to get into some things that, that you say, well, uh, uh, Wade, you're, 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 you're goring my sacred cow here. Well, I have been... I've been bothered, let me put it that way, mm. with the overemphasis on predictive prophecy on the aspects of the future. 
eschatology, if you will. If you want to get a theological term, throw it out there, a 50-cent word. <laughs> Having, a, for me, is a distraction. And it pales in comparison to the finished work of Jesus Christ. It doesn't even it doesn't even flicker on the uh, on the screen compared to what happened at the finished work of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. His work is finished. There you go. It's finished. So if you're asking Jesus to do something, he's already done it. He's already done it. It's finished. You know what Peter said? In 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2-4, through 4, he said, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord as His divine power, everybody say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. His divine power has given us how many things? All, all things. things. What's all mean? Everything. All things that pertain to life, and godliness. How? Through the knowledge of Him who's called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given unto us exceedingly great and precious Amen. promises, that by these you may be a partaker of the divine nature. Amen. Woo! My, oh my. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. He's given you, has past tense, already given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Plus, he's made you a partaker of his nature, divine nature. That means you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. A new creation, a species of being that never existed before. It's what that means. Because he has come to take up residence in you. Paul asked the Corinthians, he says, don't you Corinthians know that you're the temple of God? And Holy Spirit dwells in you. Don't you know the word for temple is the word N-A-O-S, meaning naos. it's naos, meaning holy of holies. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that's who you are? Yeah. <clears throat> Remember how many things you have All already been given. Mm -hmm. already done. Remember who, who you are, you were made to be a partaker of his divine nature. A new creation in Christ. Yes. Ephesians 1, uh, he chose you in him before the foundation of the world. Yes. You have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You've been made alive together. You've been raised up together. And you've been seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Even when you were dead in your trespasses and sins. But what, I wish some evangelical folks would read those scriptures. They need a hell to send you to, and they need some sin in order to preach against. And they need some future thing to keep you on your seat and keep you sitting on your hands instead of understanding the now reality of Holy Spirit living in you. Yeah. Jesus Christ living in you. Jesus said in John 14, 20, at that day you'll know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. Mm. Seamless union in the Trinity. You can't separate the Trinity. When Holy Spirit came in, so did Father and Son. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're the holiest place on earth. Every step you take is holiness. The Trinity lives in you. God lives in you. Can you get this? Is this getting true? Yeah. This will change your mind once you begin to understand it, once you begin to see it. Now, since I said see it, let me tell you something about vision. If you can see it, you can have it. I'm talking about anything that happens in life. 
Anything that you're led to, because Holy Spirit is in you. And as you're walking in Him, He's directing your steps. And He'll take you right into a mess. Because He wants that mess swallowed up and transformed into a miracle. That's why He led you there. And we say, oh no, oh wait, the devil's after me again. <laughs> Impossible, sweetheart. The devil is in chains of darkness until the day of judgment. 2 Peter 2, 4, Jude verse 6. The devil's not your problem unless you're in darkness. That's where he's relegated to. Is this making any sense to anybody tonight? Oh, I know I'm stepping on a bunch of religious toes. I'd love to step on toes. <laughs> All I'm doing is quoting Scripture and giving you what the truth says. It has nothing to do with some fantasy. Some so-called millennial... Uh, 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 dispensation. All the dispensationalists really like me. I guarantee you that. God doesn't deal. He's not schizophrenic. He doesn't change his mind. He deals with men by covenant. Amen. And he already cut the covenant. And Jesus Christ is the mediator of that new covenant. Period. That ends that conversation right there. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about just as well. My goodness, he's given you his own ability. Holy Spirit has given you the very ability of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 through 11. The gifts, the charismas of Holy Spirit are yours. Holy Spirit has come in to take residence in you. You may not know that yet. Those in darkness don't know that yet, but they need to hear it from us. They need to see the light of how he operates in us. And learn to know that, hey, hey, he could do that in me too. Mm -hmm. yes. Through me. Mm -hmm. Revelation gifts. Words of knowledge. Words of wisdom. Discernment of spirits. Speaking gifts. Tongues. Oh, yes, I said tongues. Interpretation of tongues. Mm -hmm. And prophecy. Yeah. The, the, the power gifts. The gift of faith. Mm -hmm. Gifts of healings and working of miracles. We've studied all these in the past. We're going to study them again because we need to be able to understand and start to step out by his faith and see these things. This is what we're talking about when we're talking about action. The works of Jesus Christ. Demonstrating his love. They're there to demonstrate his love, his character, which is Galatians 5, 22, 23. The fruit of Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, gentleness. Well, that describes me, doesn't it? Gentleness. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Jeff? <laughs> Faithfulness. Yeah, there's nine. Nine of these uh, fruit, nine of these gifts that are ours. Because of Holy Spirit who is in our lives. So you don't have to act like a two-head rattlesnake. You don't have to be mean and nasty. He's there wanting to come out of you. Your character. And all this consummate in 2 Corinthians 1.20. For all the promises of God in Him are yes. 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 And in Him Amen, amen meaning so be, so be it or that's the way it is. <laughs> to the glory of God amen. how? Through us. Turn to your neighbor and say, through you. Through you. God's covenant promises come into the earth through you and me. And if we aren't operating in these, they don't show up. Healing comes by your spoken word or your laying on of hands. That requires action, doesn't it? The working of miracles requires a prophetic action. 
Holy Spirit tells you to do something which makes absolutely no sense to your natural mind, but it initiates a working of miracles. It's a boomerang effect. I call that the boomerang effect. You know, in Australia, they use that boomerang, that curved stick, and they throw it, and it distracts that kangaroo, and it comes back, and then they'll take something else and kill the kangaroo. But that boomerang, you throw that, whatever you do as a prophetic action, it's like throw that boomerang into the heavens, and it comes back with a miracle. So, I ask the question now, because I've quoted these, I've used these over and over and over again. Everybody said, hey, amen, you have, Wade, you've been beating me with this stuff all Now, why aren't we seeing the reaction? Why aren't we seeing the results yet? Where are my difference makers? I've already told you who resides in you. Now, what are we doing, money? Then there has to be a disconnection someplace, right? Mm -hmm. Between what we say we believe and what the results are. Right. Really? I mean, I'm serious. There has to be a disconnection someplace. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, what do you think that is? Maybe we don't believe like we say we believe. Well, let me show you one area here, and this is my precursor to getting into this ministry of deliverance, all right? One of the aspects here, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty, true God to the what? Pulling down, Pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and punishing every disobedience until your obedience is fulfilled. Now, if you've been here long enough, you know that everything in the Old Covenant, everything in the Old Covenant is a type and a shadow of our life in Christ. So all the warfare, all the, everything that went on is a type of how Holy Spirit works in our lives in the new covenant life that we live. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, it lists seven nations that occupied the promised land. Thank you, brother. Got it. Thank you. And every one of those nations was bigger than Israel. They were the Canaanites, Jebusites, Amorites, Girgashites, Hivites, Perizzites, and Hittites. Seven of them. A bunch of ites, right? Yeah. The Lord told Israel that they were to utterly, utterly destroy them. Make no covenant with them. Don't marry the women. None of that stuff. D destroy them. Sounds pretty violent, doesn't it? Well, do you know that every one of those names has a meaning for us? Every one of these strongholds has a meaning of the strongholds that we're to pull down. Now, a strong, what is a stronghold? A stronghold is an area of darkness in our minds. Remember when I talked about 2 Corinthians 10? This is where the battle is, right here. It's an area of darkness, darkness meaning we just don't know the truth. It means we have believed a lie rather than the truth. Maybe it's a religious lie that we believe. And there's a bunch of those out there. It's an area of darkness that hasn't been exposed to the light of God's truth. So that brings up the first of the ministry of deliverance, the truth model of deliverance. John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. If you continue in my word, Jesus said, you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Light extinguishes darkness. I'm a great believer in the truth model of deliverance. But we're only free to the degree that truth is operating in our lives. 
a little bit of truth, a little bit of freedom, and a whole lot of darkness yet remaining. Does that make sense? So that's a progressive method of deliverance, the truth model. Now, when we get into this, you'll also see there's a sin model. A sin model of deliverance from all these things. And I get into it, I'll just go through these pretty rapidly because I've gone through them before. But the sin model can be summarized in admit it, quit it, and forget it. Most traditional denominations use the sin model of deliverance. And it works for some people. Some people have come to Jesus Christ, made their confession of faith in Him, and addictions fell off of them immediately. Almost like a miracle model. But it was a sin. They just, they just turned their back on sin. And that was all it took. Amen. For others, it takes deeper deliverance pro- projects. Now, let's get into this thing because this is what we're, we're, we're being delivered from. The Canaanite. Canaanite means humiliated. And you can only be humiliated when you have excess pride operating in your life. So it refers to pride. What was the first major obstacle the Israelites came into when they crossed over the Jordan and came into the Promised Land? What was the first major city obstacle they came to? Jericho was a Canaanite stronghold. And that took the miracle of God to bring down those walls, didn't it? Yes, it did. We pull that down. Jebusite. Jebusite means despair, depression, a victim poverty mentality. Now, let me tell you about the Jebusites. When David became king, he wanted to move his headquarters to Mount Zion. But Mount Zion in Jerusalem was occupied by, guess what? Jebusites. Now, do I need to say it about the church today? You think any of this is around the church today? You know what what pastors deal with primarily? People with a Jebusite stronghold. A perpetual point of need that never get delivered. Always a victim. I can say that because I was a pastor. Jebusite. Amorite. Well, here's another good one. It's a satanic spirit of accusation. The satanic spirit of accusation. There were five kings of the Amorites that Joshua ran into a cave as they were battling. And he, he, he rolled a rock there and he got all these captains and he said, come up here, put your foot on their necks. Every one of the names of those kings represents an attitude and an attribute of Satan. Mm-hmm. I don't have time to get into all that, but there it is. Gergeshite. I'm going to hang here a bit, minute. Mm. Gergeshite is a lying spirit. Mm. Can't tell the truth. Mm. Will color the truth. It's a spirit of anti-Christ. And to be anti-Christ is not just to be against, it's to be over and against or a substitute for Holy Spirit. Denying Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of religion. And I, I mentioned this before, but I'm telling you again. Religion specializes in distance and delay. It's all, it's out there. It's someplace in the future. It, you know, it requires zero faith for now. It won't even look at now because you have to do something with now, now faith. You have to act on it. But oh, you can, you can, oh, way out there now. Whoa, we can't do anything about that now. We just sit on our hands and wait for the rapture. Give me a break. Somebody show me where that is. First Corinthians 4.17. I got, I got to tell you about this now. 
I'm going to make some of you very angry at me. That's all right. First Thessalonians 4.17. Somebody help me here. First Thessalonians 4.17. Who's got it? That's somebody's favorite scripture. I got to tell you, you got that memorized for the color, seven different colors. Yeah. There you go. There it is. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Give it to me. <laughs> but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, Amen. concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For if the Lord himself shall descend for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these okay, words. that's good. I, I love that. Okay. Now, the word caught up is the word apazo. Apazo. Everybody say apazo. Apazo. Starts with an H, but it, it's pronounced apazo. And, it, it, and let me tell you, the wolf apazoed the rabbit. They became one. Okay. Sounds a whole lot like John 14, 20, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. At that day, you'll know that I am in my Father and you in me. And I, we were caught up in Him. Where? In the air? What do you think the atmosphere is right here? It's called the air. You can't go very much higher. There's no oxygen. So it's right down here. The heavens, though the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth He has given to the sons of man. Psalms 115. I don't want to destroy your doctrine here or punch holes in it. I'm just telling you the reality of what is now. Not some future event, but what's now. Let me ask you a question. What's going to be different at Jesus' return? What is going to be better as His return than what you have right now? Somebody help me. He's already healed you, brother. Now we have to settle in and, and receive what he's already done. You, you can't get closer to Jesus than you are right now. He lives in you. Amen. You say, well, what about Jesus' second return? Well, wait a minute now. He came as a baby, number one. And he lived for 33 and a half years. That was his first coming. He was crucified, resurrected. He came out of that tomb and Mary saw him, right? And grabbed hold of him. One go and go. He says, "Got to turn because I have to go to my father." He was going to the throne of justice to deposit his blood for the sin of all mankind. And, but he came back again in his resurrected body. Number two, his second return, and he played peekaboo with his disciples, letting them know and telling them, "Listen, there's one coming like me, but he's not just going to be with you; he's going to be in you." And he played peekaboo with him. He'd be there one minute, and then he'd be gone. He said, "I'm here, whether you know it or not." And then he'd come and tell him what he, you know, what he overheard him saying when he, he was out of their sight, <laughs> playing peekaboo, yeah. getting them ready for what was going to happen at Pentecost, when Holy Spirit came into men's lives, changing everything. Whether they knew it or not, he came in. Somebody, you say, well, wait, I don't believe that's true. Well, show me a scripture that says it's not. I'll show you many that says it is. So what are we waiting on? What now? We're just going to wait around till, till Jesus comes back? I believe in the resurrection, don't get me wrong, but I'm telling you that what we have right now is greater than, as great as what will happen when He comes. 
If you can't be, realize what you have now, I don't know that you'll realize when he comes. Amen. I doubt it. Amen. How many people do I make mad? Just let me see as you show of hands. <laughs> How many people did I make glad? Amen. You've got more now than you think you do. You are more than you think you are. Do you have any idea? I know the answer to that. No, you don't. Hivite is witchcraft, manipulation, and control. We don't have any of that in the church, do we? Um, parasite. No self-control. It means an unwalled city. That's where envy and jealousy come out of. And then Hittite. Hittite is fear. And as I said in the beginning, one of the things that I'm after tonight is the fear of man. The fear of man is a snare. But those who trust in the Lord will be protected. Proverbs 29:25. So the fear of man, seeking men's approval, a performance mentality. I have to perform to make people love me. Look, we were all brought up in that mess. In school. If you don't get A's, Wade, you know, you're... you're, you're it's like, you know, I, I'm only loved if I make A's. I'm only loved if I'm, I, I, I'm the highest scorer. I'm only loved if this. I'm only, so you become performance-oriented. And you get discouraged when you fall. And, and, and you finally realize, is it worth it? And you just kind of give up. Any of you guys know what I'm talking about? Well, they don't love me. And there's a spirit of unlove comes into your life and it causes you to go after things. Uh, it, it causes this addiction to take over your body. When the only p person who can fill that void is Holy Spirit. Well, I've gone on long enough tonight. I made it down to the end, by, by the way, didn't I? And you know I could talk about every one of those for a couple hours, uh, this whole thing. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's, it's real. So what now? Well, let Christ be Christ in you now. Give him an opportunity to work through you. Give him an opportunity for you to say a kind word to somebody that's in need. Give him an opportunity to discern what's going on in someone's life. Amen. And then act on that to demonstrate the love of God. Someone sneezes or coughs. Uh, uh, allow him to release healing into their body. It's already theirs. It's already in the atmosphere. Why not do it? We place so many limitations on ourselves. Religion has placed all manner of limitations on you. As a matter of fact, it puts everything off again to the delay in the future. Well, you know, you don't need that now. Don't worry about that. that that'll come, you know, we'll get that in after we go to heaven. Well, sweetheart, you've already been placed in heavenly places in Christ. Heaven is not your goal. It's your starting point. You already have eternal life. Eternal life is already yours, John 17, 3. Jesus defined eternal life, and this is eternal life, that you would know... That Jesus Christ and the Father. Know Him. Know Him intimately. No, no. And we need to know Him because He lives here. All He wants to do is communicate with you. He already knows you intimately. You're not going to hide anything from Him. Get it out in the open. Get rid of that mess. Well, praise God. Grab somebody's hand right now. Father, I'm coming against that spirit of fear right now. The fear of man. 
We're going to be delivered from every, every aspect of this thing right now. In Jesus' name. No more uh, 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 bowing to being rejected for me. No more bowing to insecurity. No more bowing to, to seek men's approval. But right now we're father pleasers. I'm declaring right now that we are father pleasers. We're out to, to, to make you happy with us. Glory to God. We might step on a few toes. That's all right. Glory to God. We're going to speak the truth, but we're going to speak it in love. And we're going to speak it with boldness. No more backing up. Proverbs 28.1 says, The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. And I'm releasing right now holy, violent love right now. A holy violence that goes after a compassion that destroys the work of the devil. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I know some of you have personalities that are a little shy and bashful. And, 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 but Shania, you're going to be one of these uh, devil stompers right now in Jesus' name. After the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The devil stomper. Hallelujah. Get it. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Father. Yes. Well, we got some prayer requests here. Um, Judy is having a kidney removed on May the 6th. A mass? Well, right now, who wants to pray for Judy? Good job. Pray for her. Let me give you that. Where's the... Talking sick. Here we go. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just lift up Judy right now, wherever she's at. Father, you know where she's at. And we're just speaking healing virtue into this kidney, into her body. Lord, we just ask you to release resurrection power into her. And when she has a surgery, Lord, we just pray for the comfort of Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Shalina sent in a uh, request. Said a loved one is considering abortion. Who wants to pray for that? Some of y'all be jumping up and down for that. Glory to God. Dear Father, we, we come to you right now in unity, Lord. We, we pray that... Uh, that um, you touch this this woman that's uh, that's very confused, Lord, about what's going on in her body. Allow her to know that it's your life that you've uh, placed inside of her, Lord, and um, that it matters, Lord, and that it can affect it can affect uh, abundantly, Lord, and and that it will harm her spirit, Lord, and and just comfort her and give her endur endurance and uh, knowledge and truth and just lavish your love all over her, Lord. We just pray for her mind right now, Lord, and her heart, Lord. We praise your mighty name. Thank yes, we come against hopelessness in that yes. girl's life right yes. now in Jesus' name. Praise we ask you, Father, to pour out praise your love you on her right now. Yes. Just yes. as Shania prayed right now in yes. Jesus' name. In Jesus. Um, Bobby has high heart mm -hmm. enzymes. Uh, Bill is having eye surgery tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Deb is still in pain. Mm -hmm. um, Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's having a hard time breathing, I think. Yeah. Well, we're just releasing right now, Father, your, yes. the, the very benefit of the stripes you bore. Your healing right now. It's already in the atmosphere to them. And I pray right now, Father, that eyes are open and they see that they're already healed right now in Jesus' name. They see themselves walking in health. And I'm placing a demand right now on those bodies to be healed in Jesus' name, right down to the core issues in Jesus' name. Tamara's son is being battled against. Well, glory to God. Join the crowd. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that he stands in victory right now. But the battle's already been won. It was won in Christ. We were in Him when He was on that cross. 
We were in Him when He rose from the grave. We were in Him when He's seated at the right hand of the Father. We are in Him in heavenly places right now, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name is named, not only in this age, but that which is to come. And for right now, Father, I declare this so. For Tamara's son, he comes to realize who he is in Christ and who Christ is in him. The reality of that. Let us all come to that realization tonight. Let us come up higher than we came in this room. Let us go out of this room higher than we came in. Divine elevation tonight. Thank you, Father. When you, when you begin to understand who you are in Christ, you'll look at other people and you'll see them differently. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. You'll see them created in God's image. You'll see them high and lifted up. You'll see them seated in Christ. Amen. And you'll begin to speak to that in their lives. And what you speak to, you get back. Oh, I need to say that again. What you speak to will come back. Now, praise God. Who has something before we adjourn tonight? Praise God. Is anybody edified tonight? Yes. Anybody exhorted? You didn't get much comfort tonight, though, did you? I warned you of that up front. Yes. Dave took me out to eat Wednesday night. That's the testimony. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey. <laughs> okay. You're making me blush. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we got, we went to Liberty Bell and we're sitting there in the booth and this couple comes in. And uh, she didn't have any hair, hardly. And uh, we're sitting there, and the Holy Spirit said, you need to pray for her. I said, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> then that's Connie's ministry. That's not mine. <laughs> so anyway, the more we sat there, the more he said, and I needed to, to pray for her. And I thought she had been having treatments for cancer probably and so um anyway he said i'll give you the words because that's that was my excuse i don't i won't be able to say a good prayer and so finally i said okay i said if dave goes to pay the bill and he's and they're still there i will go approach her and i thought how am i going to say when i go you know and so i said um and he did he went to pay the bill and they're sitting there and so I went and I said, uh, forgive me for asking, but are you having cancer treatments? And she said, no, I have alopecia. Alopecia. So I thought, well, and so I said, well, I said, God can take care of that. He can do anything. So I asked her, I said, can I pray for you? And she said, yes. So I prayed for her. And Dave came back and he said, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm proud of you too. And I am too. We don't despise the day of small beginnings, do we? Glory to God. Amen. Next week, next week you'll have a bottle of oil and you just jump up and just go pour it on them. Glory to God. Amen. Yes. Um, can we pray for this young woman? Uh, the Holy Spirit revealed to me what it was before she gave the testimony. Heavenly Father, we we know that what you reveal, you heal, Father. And and before Sister uh, even began to give her testimony, you spoke out of peace to me. So we just ask that you touch this sister. In a mighty way, Father, and heal and do only what you can do. It already belongs to her, as Brother Wade has explained to us tonight. Lord, so just just 
give her what already belongs to her father. In Jesus' holy and righteous name I pray. Amen. Amen. Press out while you got the mic, Bill. Heavenly Father, as we depart and go home to our families, I just ask that a, a hedge of protection be around our our uh, our uh, fellow saints here, Lord, as they go home and travel. Lord, I just ask that they have a blessed week and uh, that they walk in you, Lord, in Jesus' holy and righteous name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dylan. Well, I pray that what th what's going on here tonight has an eternal effect on those that are here and those that are watching and those that you come in contact with, so much so that you will never again be the same in Jesus' name. You be blessed to be a blessing. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. Praise God. Pray for a couple people before you leave tonight.